All right, hello everybody, and welcome to the Joe Doc Hour. All aboard! <laughs> the Joe Doc Hour will launch in five, five four, three, two, 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 one. one. Prepare, Prepare for, for the, the Joe, Joe Doc Hour. With us today is um, a very special guest. He was actually the first person I wanted to have on uh, on the show, but uh, th- it, it, it's happening now, and that is the man, the Slavster, Miroslav, in the house. Can I get an applause? All right. Yeah. Man. All right, Miroslav, how, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great today, yeah. Today is, uh, we had a little break. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've been doing all kinds of things. I've been playing. I've been building guitars. I've been taking care of my girlfriend who, is, uh, um, ha- who has a cold. So I've been cooking for her, you know, feeling, you know, feeling useful. Mm-hmm. And the, watching the game, you know, Cro- Croatia and, uh, and Canada. You know, that's mm-hmm. my people, Croatia and Serbia. So, uh, yeah, you know. Oh, man. Doing good. And here I am, you know, on Joe Doc <laughs> Show. I'm, not, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. This is the this is the top top line of the uh, of the rounds, you know, the late night rounds. But um, Miroslav, I wanted my first question to be um, if you could tell us a little bit about your origins and where you're from. Sure, I was born in a country that was called Yugoslavia, mm-hmm. which was uh, uh, you know it's it's in Eastern Europe, and uh, it was a really interesting place. It was a socialist country. Um, actually, it was run by a communist party. So I, usually in America, they call those communist countries. But it was different than the Eastern Bloc because it was more open. And, uh, and they kind of were playing the balance between the United States and the Russia, you know, or, or Soviet Union at that time. So it was kind of, uh, you know, it was, it was much better balanced. You know, we could travel, we could get good information, you know, good films, good uh, uh, music and stuff like that. And uh, I grew up in a, in a really cool family. Both of my parents were uh, artists. And, uh, and so, therefore, you know, they, they didn't really push me. You know, they, they weren't really ambitious, you know, to, for their kid to, to be uh, an artist. But also, they weren't um, uh, uh, restraining me. It's just like, it was just like, you know, what I wanted to do, you know, it was cool with them. And so, I owe them a lot. You know, they, they've been really supportive, uh, you know, all of, all of their lives. Mm-hmm. Wow, what kind of art did your parents make? My dad was a writer, and he was a, a specialist in in our language, you know, which which is called Serbo-Croatian. Uh, so, you know, I developed a real strong interest in language, you know, th- that then extended into my learning of English. You know, I just love English and I love different kind of idioms and so on. And my mom was an actress, you know, so she was a, a you know a performer, and so I grew up. Uh, you know, since I was like, you know, four or five years old, I grew up in theater, you know, and th- she, she was a, 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 a theater actress. And so, you know, I grew up like in the, you know, in the backstage and, and in the dressing rooms and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm real familiar with that kind of vibe. Oh, cool. So, so, um, so how did it eventually lead that you got into music? Because you were in that art scene and all. Did, uh, is, uh, is being a musician what you wanted to do? When you were a kid? No, not really. You know, it wasn't, you know, if you're talking kid, you know, like b- before you're a teenager, I didn't really think of music as something like, oh, I, w- I want to be a musician. I don't remember really wanting to be a, a particular thing. You know, some people think, oh, you know, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a fireman or whatever. You know, I, I don't remember having any, any particular desire, but also, you know, it was like I'm going to be a musician. The thing is that, that my dad, was a very good singer. He sang really well, and he accompanied himself on the guitar. Mm -hmm. So since I was, I mean, I have a picture of me when I'm like uh, six months old or something with a guitar, you know, so there was a guitar around the house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And at a certain point, you know, probably maybe when I was like 10 or so, you know, I started kind of, messing with the guitar and and uh, and my dad was really cool he didn't he didn't e- either say oh yeah you want me to show you something or he didn't say get away from that thing it was like hey you know you want to play with it you know just don't break it and then eventually you know i i developed enough interest you know where i wanted to learn some chords and things like that mm-hmm. and so that's you know that's how how my my 
interest in music started. O also, my parents had good musical taste, you know, so, so I, w I was listening to some good music, you know, since I was a kid, you know, some good classical music, you know, some jazz, like Louis Armstrong, Nat King Cole, people like that. And, you know, I think that kind of stuck somewhere. Definitely. So then by the time that you um, eventually did want to pick up the guitar, what kind of was like the, like the genre of music that you wanted to, to make? Right, you know, when I when I was about like let's say thirteen or fourteen, yeah, you know, I just wanted to, you know, to to do, you know, you know, I was a really shy kid, you know, so, um, you know, it was a way for me to somehow, you know, feel a little, a little more comfortable in company of people, you know, I so so I was playing the the you know songs basically, you know, that were popular at that time. So now, you know, we were talking like mid seventies, you know, mm -hmm. so you know a lot of like Beatles songs, Simon and Garfunkel, like early Neil Young. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, you know, some of the local, you know, local bands, uh, you know, so that, that's basically what I was, what I was doing. And then, then at one point, uh, there was this guy, you know, we used to hang out, uh, you know, outside, you know, by the river. The, 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 I, I grew up in a city called Belgrade that's on two rivers, and one of them is Danube, you know, the big, the, the, you know, one of the big European rivers. So we used to hang out by the river and, and just kind of like strum guitars and hang out and, you know, smoke your first cigarette, you know, this kind of stuff. <laughs> Um, and uh, and then there was this guy that showed up that was playing some classical, you know. And I thought, wow, you know, there's like, there's more to this than just like these like five chords that I know. And you know, so that's that, that's when I kind of got interested in in you know in pursuing guitar in a little more serious way. Do you remember uh, what classical piece he was playing? He was playing the uh, 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 Sore Studies. I remember he was playing the Sore Study w w in Segovia, book number five, the one in B minor. That's kind of like a melancholy piece. So, uh, yeah. you know, that kind of struck the, you know, struck, you know, the, the, the resonant kind of note with me, you know. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, and just so um, our listeners know, Miroslav's an insane nylon string guitarist who, um, who has such technical abilities on the classical guitar. So then, um, uh, so, so then when did it kind of lead that you started to get serious about classical music? Um. You know, I I started I started high school, and at the same time I was taking guitar lessons. You know, at that time I was I was I was really interested in classical guitar, and I started taking classical guitar lessons. And uh, and at a certain point, I realized that I don't have to go to high school. I can go to this. Uh, um, it's called music high school. So it's like it's high school and you have a little bit of like the, the regular subjects, but it's really heavily music oriented, you know. And um, and that was like kind of like a breaking point for me. It was like, damn, you know, it's like you could actually like do this, you know, and not have to go through. You know, it was very rigorous schooling over there. Okay, I think we have to stop for a minute. <laughs> Can you talk more, uh, continue talking about your high school? Yeah, you know, I, I realized that I didn't have to go to, to regular high school, you know, because the schooling there w was very rigorous, you know. I mean, I remember, you know, we were, you know, we were learning, uh, learning English, learning Latin, you know, then you had to, p to pick another language and, you know, geography, chemistry, biology, whatever. It was, it was pretty heavy, you know. And, and you know, it's great to, to have good, broad education, but I was really interested in music, you know. So, so then I shifted to, to, to this music school that was like a conservatory. You know, it's very serious. You know, you had instrumental lessons, you had all of the theory, you know, harmony, counterpoint, and everything. And, uh, and that's, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, when I realized, well, you know, I mean, this is actually something that you can do, you know, that you can continue your education in this, in this direction. I wasn't really thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to be this or that or whatever. I was just kind of doing stuff that, uh, that felt good, you know. Yeah. No, that's, that's cool. Very natural. And so, um, and so... It led you to study in Italy, right? Isn't that where you studied? Right, I studied in Italy. You know, I, I mean, before that, actually, I came to the States for one year. You know, on some kind of exchange program in 1974. You know, I was like, I, I know, I was 14 or something like that, and uh, and I met this girl. Mm -hmm. See, and then I went back, and you know, and you know, she became my girlfriend, and then we wanted, and she she also wanted to study music, and so we wanted to 
study somewhere together. Mm -hmm. And we both wanted to study in Italy. You know, she was, she was interested in studying composition, and I wanted to study guitar, and I was already connected with some teachers in Italy. Uh, they had a really strong tradition over there. And so I actually started studying in Italy, but then there were some, some problems with the visa or some, there was some, some crazy stuff going on uh, where it became really hard for me to, to do that. And then my girlfriend, uh, you know, who is from, from LA, you know, she said, hey, you know, since we can't do the Italian thing, there's this really cool school uh, here that's called California Institute of the Arts, you know. And, and she sent me a catalog, and I remember looking at the catalog and thinking, man, I'll never get into this place, man. It was like, I mean, it was like Mars, you know. It was like mm -hmm. so unique. I mean, it's unique even by, by you know, by, by Western standards, but especially for me, you know, you know, coming out of the place that, you know, that wasn't totally open and, and coming out of the education that was very, you know, very sort of conservative. You know, I looked at the catalog and, you know, I see like the pictures of people in the gallery and dogs walking around and stuff like that. I thought, man. But I made the tape. You know, I went, I went to a studio. I remember it was winter time. Um, and it was snowing. I remember, I remember that day clearly. You know, I went into a, a studio, and I made the tape, uh, uh, you know, reel-to-reel -reel tape, I remember. You know, I played, uh, I played some, uh, some Renaissance music, and I played a little bit of Bach, and I played one, some improvisation or something, and I sent it off. Didn't really think too much about it. And then, like, in, in March or something, like, you know, I get this thing, you know, congratulations, you know, you've been accepted to get California Institute of the Arts and everything. It was like, whoa. You know, so now, you know, I had not, all of a sudden, like, you know, I had to deal with this situation. And as I said, my parents were very supportive. You know, they didn't have any, you know, uh, 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 you know by, by American standards, I mean, they were, they were really poor. So we didn't really have much money. But, you know, I was, you know, I, I got married, you know, so, so, that, so that I could... Uh, you know, be able to 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 stay here and and to work and everything. And so I came, you know, I came and and uh, and started Cal Arts, man, in 1979, September 1979. Tuition was 3,600 dollars. Damn. Wow. So then, when you got here, you were studying with uh, Stuart. Right. When I got here, you know, Cal Arts was it was a different profile school. You know, it was much more uh, in. Uh, uh, you know, there, there was no jazz department. You know, it was really concentrating on contemporary music, you know, what, what they call contemporary music or new music, uh, you know, that's basically a con continuation of classical tr traditions. Mm -hmm. You know, composers, like, you know, like uh, at that time, John Cage or, or Stockhausen or, or Lou Harrison, people like that. So that was the emphasis of the school and, and, and small, smaller chamber groups. It wasn't like an orchestra type school, you know, let's say like Eastman or Juilliard or those schools. And that's what, sort of what set it apart. And another thing that really set it apart was the fact that it had this this really serious world music program. You know, mm -hmm. North Indian, African, and uh, uh, Javanese Balinese. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No. And um, I feel like Halar's really opened a door for you because isn't that where you met one of your first like collab big collaborators, Mark? Uh, Mark Nassif, yeah. Yeah, Mark Nassif. Sure, yeah. I mean, I always emphasize to, to my students that, that, that the, the, the most important thing that you're getting for your money is not the faculty, it's not the, the facilities, it's the people that are studying here, you know, because it's a really, it's always been from the beginning to this day a really unique group of people. Mm -hmm. and, and so the thing you, you got to remember is that at this time of your life, which is super important, you know, you're like right at the, at the crossroads, you know, the people that you meet here are going to be the people that you're going to be working with for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And I was very lucky that, that uh, you know, there were several people that were, you know, a few people that were students, a few people that were faculty that really kind of, uh, you know, that were way more advanced than I was, you know, that kind of took me under their wing and then we started playing together. And uh, yeah, that's where my collaboration started with John Bergamo, who was a, 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 a percussion teacher here. And, uh, unfortunately, he, he's not with us anymore. Um, Mark Nassif, who is a, a, an amazing uh, 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 drummer and percussionist, who had already a career with, you know, with, with the, you know, uh, the Velvet you know, Underground. He played with Velvet Underground, with Gary Moore, with with the, uh, 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 you know, so many different people. I can't even start to to with Thin Lizzy. You know, it's like big big mm -hmm. playing stadiums, but also. He left that because he was really interested in creative music, and he was really interested in studying deeper, the, especially the, the the African and and, uh, and North Indian rhythmic theories. You know, wow. um, 
and uh, yeah, so so I think, and of course, to this day, you know, we've, in the meantime, you know, we've put out, you know, dozens of records together, and and been all over the world, uh, and snake uh, music. I'm sorry. Isn't it snake snake music? Well, yeah, snake music is our, our our record together, you know. But he was already on my my very first record that was called Bracha from 1986. Then the next one was called Tam Navoda, you know. And there we had great guests. We had David Torn, El Shankar. Um, and uh, then there was a record called Let's Be Generous, you know, which is a uh, uh, really interesting sort of like uh, neo fusion record. Uh, yeah, you know, and then and then you know we made other connections. You know, it's like I, I connected him with certain people, and he connected me with certain people. You know, so it's kind of like a tree that that kind of grows and branches in different ways. But it all started here. Yeah. Wow. And so when you were um and so around that time when you were uh, in your early career, were you already starting to make uh, like your own arrangements of traditional uh, Serbian and Balkan region music? Yeah, I mean that was you know that that, that was the thing you know. W w w I always I was I was since I came here you know I was interested in 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 folk music of that area. You know I was still playing you know I was playing repertoire. I was playing everything like from Dowland and Bach. Uh, uh, Spanish guys, you know, uh, uh, Albanese and so on, and uh, you know, and some modern composers. And I used to actually have composition students write new pieces for me for guitar because I felt like I wanted to contribute to the to the repertoire of our instrument. And uh, but I always like in my in my recitals, I always had like a part where I would play some Balkan music and then maybe I would play something, you know, like some Brazilian music or something. And I was always really looking forward. The most of that, I was nervous about the classical part, you know, because it's like you're, you know, it's a different kind of, the different kind of mental space, you know. Yeah. And then at a certain point, I thought, well, wait a minute, you know, I can actually just do these things that I really love to do and that I feel really comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. And by that time, you know, I was already kind of, you know, doing a, a little more of a unique approach to, you know, to Balkan music, and I was, and and this group uh, uh, formed. Uh, that was called Bracha, that, that, yeah. that had John Bergamo on percussion, that had a guy named Dave Philipson playing a North Indian flute called Bansuri. Mm -hmm. And Dave is a fantastic musician and he studied, in, he was on Fulbright in India. And then Mark Nassif was also a part of that group. And, uh, and so we were playing some of the Balkan music, some of the original music that was influenced by Indian music and by different kinds of world music. You know, this was mid 80s, you know, it's like the, the whole world music thing, you know, just wasn't, you know, nearly as big, you know. It was really, you know, it was really just kind of starting to 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 come to the forefront. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's so interesting because one thing I feel like um, from listening to your music is, is is that there's a lot of different styles that sort of go into what you do. You know, like how is like, and I know specifically like around that time, what sort of musical styles were influencing were influencing you, like. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I was influenced by, by all, all kinds of things. You know, of course, you know, I, I had a really, really strong classical training. So, uh, you know, I was really interested in, especially in the er, in earlier music, you know, the music of Bach, I was really studying that very, you know, v you know very seriously. Um, you know, then I was interested in, in, in jazz, of course. You know, I was interested in, you know, people like John Coltrane, people like Miles Davis, you know, s switching into the elect electric period. You know, the early fusion uh, uh, music like uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, there was this folkloric music. So I was studying all of it. And, you know, I was really always into blues and Jimi Hendrix. You know, that was like, to this day, you know, that's like the stuff that, 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 that can always inspire me. You know, I can listen to stuff that I've heard like a thousand times, you know, and still be, you know, be like really thrilled about it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and then I started, you know, the fact that I was playing music from, from my part of the world, you know, it gave me a certain kind of identity. There wasn't anybody else doing that kind of stuff, you mm -hmm. know. And it's really important, I think, to, to sort of dig, you know, dig I into your roots and see what's, you know, see what's there. Because, uh, you know, that, that gives you a certain kind of identity and a certain kind of uniqueness. Because everybody's unique in the end, you know. Yeah. Uh, no, I feel like that's one thing that I've noticed in your stuff. Like, you know, like the traditional sort of... Uh, element to it is kind of like a lingering quality to s to a lot of the albums that you make, but I think that what um, what I feel like the listeners hear is is that it doesn't sound like the traditional sort of style that it's typically played in. Would you, would you say that's true? 
Yeah, that's totally true. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, in ter- like if some ethnomusicologist, you know, listens to me, you know, that's like I'm not, you know, I'm really not even. I don't exist for them in terms of like somebody who is trying to preserve a tradition. You know, it's mm-hmm. like there there are a lot of people just like how you have in America. You have people, you know, like young young musicians who are playing like really traditional style bluegrass. You know, with like you know claw hammer, banjo, and 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 stuff like that. Or or you have people, you know, who who were going back into like the jazz of the 50s and the 60s and so on. I you know I I don't try to play uh, the way that. Uh, the music was originally played. There are people, there, there are young musicians who are really into that, you know, trying, trying to, to reproduce the music the way that it was played 50 years ago and the way it was played 100 years ago and so on. You know, I don't do that. You know, I, I, I work with it and, and I, you know, I have incredible respect for, for tradition yeah. and, you know, and I feel that in order to play that music in any way, you really have to study it you know very very thoroughly you know yeah. and then once you've studied it thoroughly you know then you know then you do with it you know wh- whatever you know whatever is your artistic expression you know mm-hmm. because my you know i you know i don't come from like some village you know wh- where i played like a little flute you know it's yeah. like i come from like a large city i travel to america i live now i live in america so so my my life needs to be reflected in my music you know and and and, and so all of it, you know, so that means, you know, the, the, you know, the whole urban side, the American side of it, you know, the, and, and then also the, you know, the side of, 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 of where I come from, you know, and where my, my, you know, my grand, grandpa, you know, lived in a village and my great grandpa uh, uh, had a, a brick factory, you know, these yeah. like, there were famous bricks over there, you know, so it's like, <laughs> you know, and then I, you know, I went to the village where, you know, where, where my grandpa was born and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, people are, you know, you know, growing crops, you know, taking care of animals, you know, make, you know, it's like he, this huge thing. And then the next thing I'm like in New York, you know, and I'm playing like on Broadway or something. It's like, it's a huge range, you know, and I think that it needs to be reflected in 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 my work you know so it doesn't matter what i take you know if i took you know some kind of like a crazy fusion piece you know that like comes out of let's say that that comes primarily out of jazz and and, and out of uh, f- uh, forms that are that are uh, uh, basically um, American, well, you know, then I would bring those influences as well, you know, it's like I would bring in the influence of Balkan music and so on and so forth. So likewise, if I'm playing a Balkan piece, you know, I'm going to bring those other influences that are really close to me, you know, yeah. uh, you know, in terms of my uh, musical taste and also in terms of my education. It's like I, I wouldn't throw anything in there that I don't feel like I've, I've actually studied thoroughly. Yeah. What do you think in uh, in the many different collaborations you've done? What do you think that uh, collaborating brings out of you, or like how do you think that you're able to? Um, how do you feel like collaboration has uh, affected your uh, creative processes? It, it it it's done a lot for me. Uh, I, I don't I don't have like a, a need to be center stage, you know, and I don't have that kind of ego, you know, where I like need to be like, you know, in the front where I need to be noticed and so on. And so I really enjoy, you know, working with people who are more of, of that type, you know, it's like providing, you know, I, I'm, I'm a really good accompanist, I think, you know, it's like, so whether it's a singer, whether it's another guitarist, whether it's some other instrument, it doesn't matter, you know, and I can do, you know, I can step up. You know, no problem. But but I but I really like this role of of supporting somebody and of making somebody sound good. You yeah. know, I mean, I'm not saying that they don't already sound good, but m- make them sound even better. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you a very quick story about Charlie Hayden, the great musician who was teaching at Cal Arts for many oh, years. Yeah. I remember when he came here for the very first time, the, uh, Roy Stein brought him, and he was kind of jamming with students. And I remember we were playing a tune uh, uh, over Nat Coleman's. Uh, you know, and I, I've never been really a jazz player. And, and uh, you know, but hey, it was me and somebody else, and Charlie was playing bass. You know, and so we were playing, uh, I can't remember the name of the tune right now. Uh, and. So we played the head, and then it comes to the solo, and I start playing, you know? And it's like, I'm sounding good, man. Yeah. You know, it's like, wow. You know, it's like, maybe I can even, like, play jazz, you know? So I'm playing, and then we finish the solo and everything. And then later I thought about it, and I thought, 
you know the reason why I sounded good because of what he was doing. You know, I could I could I could almost play anything, and Charlie Hayden would like put the stuff around it yeah. that makes it sound great. And so, you know, without really consciously going for it, you know, that's really what my what you know what my work has been uh, is uh, is you know I, I I do have solo solo projects and so on, but but. Uh, I really like being able to work with people and not to have like a clash of egos. You know, with Nassif, we've played together for, uh, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm bad at mathematics, 36 years since we've been playing together, you know. Um, with Vladko Stefanovsky, that I have a duo, duo with another guitar player, you know. You know, we've been playing since 1995. So, you know, these kinds of things, like if you look at, 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 at a lot of bands or if you look at a lot of these collaborations, you know, they just break up, you know, at a certain point because yeah. of egos and so on. But, you know, I, I, can, I can function in, in, in those kinds of situations, not step on anybody, and yet, you know, have like full respect of what I do. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like uh, your album Live in Belgrade mm -hmm. uh, is probably an example of one of your most um, shreddiest. Well, you know, Vl Vladko, uh, Vladko is a, 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 a real shredder. I mean, a, a, a very, very highly technically accomplished and really very, very interesting musician. And also, he's really the, the, the person that kind of opened my doors in Europe, you know, because he's really well known over there. And, uh, you know, I sort of came in as this, like, unknown quantity. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time that he actually played duo guitars with anybody. And, mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, you know, he was, he, he was famous when we started playing. And, I, like, nobody knew who I was, you know. And so all of a sudden people started thinking, but who is this other guy, you know? And it, it's a great place to be, man, where you're not known at all, you know. Yeah. Because now, you know, people know who I am, so now the expectations are high, you know. And yeah. it's like... You always got to live up to some expectations, but but when you're unknown, man, you just you just come in there and and uh, you blow their minds, you know, yeah. and they you, they go like, whoa, wait a minute, you know. Uh, but anyway, so so we started playing back mm -hmm. then, and and uh, actually the first record that that we did is called Khrushchev. You know, we recorded that in in Macedonia, and it became sort of like a cult record it was recorded by a by a company called MA recordings and they record everything with just a pair of microphones it's like audio they 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 record for sort of audiophile market and that just recently came out on vinyl also oh cool um, and then all of the other records came out of that you know and, and, and a repertoire mm. but anyway you know that's that's a really cool collaboration and it's it's a, it's a good example of you know uh, you know somebody who is really well known and, and, and who, you know, definitely has an ego. So if I had the same kind of ego, it, it just wouldn't be a good match. You know, it's like, yeah, so, you know, things, would, things would just blow up some, someplace. Yeah, uh, which is also probably why you've been able to make music together for so long. Absolutely. Because it's pretty uh, on and off, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we make music together, every, you know, every year. And, and, you know, we're really good friends outside of that. You know, we yeah. know each other's families and, and, and have, you know, and have, you know, you know, he stayed with me here. You know, he was actually at Kell Arts at one point. We did, we actually played a concert here some years ago. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and I'm, you know, when I'm there, you know, we, you know, I, you know, it's, it's like his home is always open to me. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're really good friends also. Um, so from playing, because another one of your big people that you play a lot with is, uh, is also, uh, like world famous actor Rabe, um, how do you say his last name? Rade, Rade Sherbegia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, who was actually in like one of my favorite movies, Snatch. Snatch, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> as yeah. Boris. Boris the Blade, yeah. yeah. You put the stone in the case, then open the case and give me the stone. And um and like um, how would you describe that style of music that you're playing? Because it sounds like it's like very um, just like chill. It's very mellow, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he uh, Rade is, is quite a bit. He's about fifteen years older than me, and and uh, he was incredibly. I mean, he still is, of course, but he was incredibly famous actor. And my mom, who was very, who was an actress herself, and was very uh, uh, harsh on 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 actors. She thought that he was the greatest actor in you know in in our you know in, in our circles. So. I grew up, you know, really 
having great respect for him, you know. And that he was living in L.A. Uh, when we met, which was in about around 2005 or so. And I remember, I remember phone call, man. It was on my answering machine. It was like, and it's like, it's him, you know. And he, he's asking me, you know, to do some playing. So it was amazing. He's the most wonderful person and, and uh, generous and then an unbelievable actor, you know, because he's... Uh, known as a film actor, but he's an incredible theatrical actor. You know, it's like live theater, you know, that's like, that's really tough. I mean, this guy yeah. knows, this guy has memory. He has, you know, he knows in Shakespeare, for example, he, he will know not only like, let's say the Hamlet, you know, he'll know several roles all by heart, you know, then he'll yeah. know the Greek stuff. He'll know the, the all kinds of things. But anyway, the kind of music that we play, it comes out of a, a more of like a European tradition, which is of people who are uh, who are singing music that that is where, where poetry, you know, the, the lyrics are more yeah. important, you know, and it's usually very simple music. You know, let's say a, a good good parallel uh, uh, in in the West would be somebody like Leonard Cohen, for example. Yeah. You know, and Leonard Cohen is somebody that. Actually, they they knew each other, and and uh, and you know would be like a great inspiration. But it's more about the lyrics than about the music or about, or about any kind of virtuosity. So, the thing you know with him, you know I've been I've been just learning how. You know how he deals with an audience. You know it's amazing. You know you you see somebody who is such an experienced performer. You know, and we've played for you know, for for, pretty large audiences. You know of, of many yes. thousands of people. And uh, you know, just you know, being around that and 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 and, and seeing that and, and feeling, uh, you know, how you know, seeing like a master at work, you know, and yeah. you're right there with them, you know, on stage, you know, it's it's uh, it's really uh, it's it's really important and it's, it's very inspiring. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And uh, just because I want to uh, cover, ask you a couple more questions. Uh, because we don't have a ton, a ton of time, I just want to ask you a couple more questions about some different aspects of the sure, stuff that you're doing. Yeah. Is that cool? Uh, that. I want to talk to you because one thing that you know, on top of being a very, uh, a, a very worldly and uh, incredible musician, you also have become a luthier and build guitars. And uh, how did you kind of get into that? Well, that's cool. That really kind of connects to, to the last question. You know, at, 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 at a certain point, you, know, you need something that, that gives you some kind of peace and that kind of centers you in a particular way. You know, a lot of, a lot of musicians are, are meditating, doing yoga, uh, you know, doing things that are not directly connected with music, that are not actually music. So, so for me, building instruments is, is a part of that, although of course it's connected to music, but, but for me it's more like actually working with wood, you know, working with materials. And then in the end actually getting a result that's really cool, which is like, you know, I, I can play this thing or I can give it to you and you can play it and it's, it's a real pleasure. But, uh, yeah. you, know, I've, you know, I started teaching at CalArts when I was 25, you know, yeah. and so, so at a certain point you really, you know, and I learn all the time. You know, I learn from my students. I learn from my colleagues. You know, there, you know, there are always people that are better than you, and and everybody's got a different angle that you can learn from. Um, but you know, when you are in your like 40s or, or even 50s or something like that, and you pick up something new, and you're really excited about learning, and you're just kind of starting. You know, now all of a sudden you're not like the person. You know, like the yeah. professor. You know, you're like a student again. You know. It's a, it's a great place to be, you know, and it's something that we need. So that's, you know, I, you know, I studied instrument building and I, and I continue to study it. And, uh, and, you know, it's been, you know, it's been a real pleasure for me. And also because I don't have to make a living from it, you know, I can just do what, you know, I can just come up with some crazy design and just build it, you know, because I'm not yeah. wasting time. But like the, but like the process itself for you is the enjoyment of it. Absolutely, man. You know, when I'm in, when I'm in my shop, it's like, you know, I'm I'm gone. You know, I forgot. You know, I forget about the news. I forget about anything, and you just concentrate. It's really, you know, for me, it's it's very, you know, it's very medicinal. It's very healing, and and it's, uh, uh, for sure, it's like something I can't, I couldn't imagine my life without it. You know, it's a really yeah. important element in it. And um, I wanted to ask you, um, what's your biggest non-musical influence? 
Well, that's a that's a big question. Um, you know, I can't. You know, I can't really. You know, it's hard to, to say it's like one thing, you know. I, I don't even know what you mean by influence. Is it like, would it be like, like a movies, person or? Like films. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've read a lot, you know. I've, and, and recently I've been reading more short stories and poetry, you know. I've been, I've been more into, into like shorter forms. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of cinema, you know. It's like, and, and particularly, um, you know, the, the, the stuff that, that, uh, that I sort of grew up watching and that 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 kind of formed me, which is which is sort of European European cinema uh, of the like 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, people like some Italian directors like Antonioni, Fellini, Bertolucci, German directors Herzog, Wim Wenders, and of course some of the Americans like uh, uh, Jarmusch, for example. I love Jarmusch. Um, yeah, you know, so, you know, f yeah, film, film has been, film has been a big influence on me. But yeah, I would say, you know, film and literature, you know, that's, you know, those are really important things. Another thing that I really love to do is cook. You know, I think cooking is really important. And 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 I hear that a lot of musicians love to cook. You know, they're really good cooks. You know, certainly all the all of the people that 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 I know uh, uh, at least really enjoy food. You know, enjoy just like enjoy it as a, as a, as sort of like our art and and uh, 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 you know it's both artistic and, and very physical, you know, very sort of sensual. Mm -hmm. uh, but I really like to cook, also. You know, I mean, not, you know, I'm not like a serious student of cooking, but you know, there there are a few cuisines, w you know, where I can make a decent meal. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, lastly, the last question I want to ask is: Is that what advice would you give to uh, all the people out there? Wow. Um, another. Uh, <coughs> Another e easy question. Yeah, that's a very easy question. Well, I'd say you know, b because I teach at Cal Arts, and and and, and uh, you know, I've noticed with my students that, that that the issue of of how to be unique and how to be original, uh, you know, it's a really big one. You know, it's a really yeah. big one, not only for Cal Arts students, not only for our students, but especially at, at that age, you know. And so, I guess if if I'm to give advice, is to remember that you already are original. You know, everybody. Is different, you know. Everybody yeah. is really unique. Our work as artists is to really find who you are, and to go with it. Because the thing is, it always changes, you know. Yeah. So it's really worked for me. You know, it's like I've never had like a goal of going like, you know, I'm gonna be one of the world's greatest guitarists or whatever. It's like this completely ludicrous, you know. It's just like I was doing what what I wanted to do at that at any given time, you know, and then you just kind of, you got to pay attention, you know, because you can go through w w this door or through that door. But I think if you really, you know, look into yourself and if you follow yourself and, and you have to accept yourself, you know, yeah. it's like, you're, you know, maybe you're not the person that, that you imagine that, 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 that you want it to be, but you got to find who, who you actually are. And, and, and once you find who you actually are, you're going to be comfortable with that. You're going to be, aware and you're going to be unique and if you're unique you're going to be noticed and if you're noticed you're even going to be able to make a living damn <laughs> okay that's what's <laughs> up all right miroslav thank you yeah. so much all right all right yeah. i know i know i've I gotten somewhere when i'm on joe doc show yeah <laughs> <laughs>